If you're planning your upcoming trip to Nusa Penida, then this video is for you. We're sharing everything from how to get here, where to stay, what to do, what not to do, and how much it's going to cost you. So stay tuned. If you find any of this information helpful at all, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this. Nusa Penida is famously known for its outstanding shoreline and hard to reach beaches. And of course, most notably, this iconic view of Kalinking Beach. It's definitely an island made for the adventurous. Let us show you why. Penida is a small island off the coast of Bali and it's accessible from two ports, the Sunur port and Kusamba. We suggest using Kusamba because it's way less busy and less touristy. It's cheaper and it's a shorter little ferry ride over to Nusa Penida. Granted it is longer if you're like staying in Changu to get to the port but I'm telling you it's so worth it. If you do choose Kusamba, which we suggest that you do, Use our favorite company called Ganga Express. It's a 15 to 20 minute ride just over to Nusa Penida. They are so organized, they're always on time, and it's only about 150 to 200K per person. There's three ways that you can actually book this trip. You can book on a site like 12 Go Asia or on the Ganga Express website. You can ask your tour guide or your driver, like our favorite driver, Preddy. He can book it for you or you can just rock up at the port and pay for tickets there. That's what we always do and we always get on. In fact, the last time we came, there were only four foreigners on that boat. So it's more of like a local port, but it's just way less busy than the other one. Seriously, I'll insert some pictures here of the other one. It's mayhem there at the moment. The Ganga Express has eight boats a day and basically they run every hour or so between 6.30 in the morning to 4 p.m. That's about all you need to know about getting here. Once you're on Panita, you can hire a scooter if you want to explore the island yourself or you can get a driver to take you to all the best spots. A scooter like this one usually costs around 100 IDR per day and if you want to get a driver that'll cost you about 600 to 800 rupiah and he'll take you to all the best spots. Grab or Gojek don't operate here on Nusa Penida. So it's important to organize your own transport. We got our bike right at the port. As you come off there's a whole bunch of people asking if you need a scooter, if you need a driver. So it's pretty easy to get one yourself. Otherwise if you're staying at a very nice hotel they can definitely organize one for you. Speaking of hotels, we had the pleasure of being invited to stay at one of the best Airbnbs on the island. We did a whole separate video on that which you can watch by clicking on the link above or down in the description. This is definitely a more luxurious stay and if it isn't in your budget, we have something else for you. So we've now arrived at our budget accommodation for the night. Really, really don't need to break the bank when you come to Nusa Penida. There's places all the way from this glamping spot. There's five star hotels, luxury villas, and then homestays like this that can cost you between 150 IDR to 250 IDR for the room per night. So you really, really can choose how you want to spend your time in Penida. It can cost you a ton of money or it can just be a super affordable getaway. Let me quickly show you through our little room for the night. It is so cute. I feel so comfortable here. Look behind right there too. There's an ocean view. So beautiful palm trees, beautiful music playing, and then the ocean all the way down there. Definitely a great spot. It's so green, there's so many different trees and plants. Well, anyway, welcome to our room. It's like a little teepee. It's so cozy, look at it. The bed, yeah, I've tried it. It's not the most comfortable, but whatever, you know? There's, like, everything's clean. That's what matters the most. Towels, side tables, lights, air conditioning. They give you stuff for mosquitoes, lots of plugs. To be honest, I think this is nicer than our homestay in Changu. What do you think? I agree. Yeah, this is better. Then we've got a little wee sink. Look at you. <laughs> and this bathroom. This is cool. This is great. It's all you need, eh? Where's the shower thing? Here he is. Oh, you can even... 
Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. I would say the best time is between April and September. It's a lot drier here, there won't be as much rain which will make it a lot easier to explore the island. Most of the activities on the island are just outdoor things. You're gonna be going to beaches and viewpoints basically. So you don't wanna be traveling around in the rain. It is not fun. With that said, we are currently here at the beginning of October and the weather has been decent. There's been some showers here and there, but then it's cleared up within half an hour and it's blue skies. It is up and down. It's a bit unpredictable. There's currently a huge storm brewing out there. It's already rained this morning, but now it's sunny again and then probably in a two hours or so there'll be another storm. So yeah, you just gotta kinda time your, time your activities around the weather. That's another reason why we recommend at least two to four days on the island, just in case you do get rained out for the majority of one of your days, you'll still have time to get most of the things done. Let's talk about what to pack for Nusa Penida, because this is quite important. If you're staying in Bali, look at leaving like your main big luggage, many rolly cases and stuff at your previous accommodation or your hotel because you're going to want to pack very light here for Nusa Penida. It is quite a rustic island and the ferry is, you know, you don't want to be taking big luggages over your head like this dude that we saw and chucking it onto the ferry. So definitely pack like a little backpack like this and I just brought another baggie worth of stuff like this so they're easy to handle and it's totally enough luggage for your little trip I mean you're only going to do about two to three days and in terms of what to pack exactly just all summery stuff tank tops lots of bikinis because you're going to be doing mainly water activities and getting sandy and stuff you want to be able to change your clothes after you're snorkeling or like we got stuck in a bit of a rainstorm so we got drenched so bring enough t-shirts and shorts for those oh yeah one important thing is mosquito repellent i really highly recommend you bring that and lots of sunscreen please make sure it's reef safe though if you're doing the diving and snorkeling and going into the ocean another very important thing to pack because the beaches are so hard to get to are closed nice shoes because those walks down to the beach and back up are basically like an intense hike whatever you need for hiking wear that and then another thing is a rain jacket because i do think it rains quite frequently on Nusa Penida because we've been here three times now and we've had issues with the rain and then i pack like just one pair of long pants because once you've been in the water and if the sun starts to go down and you're wet and you're driving on the bike can be a little chilly but nothing too drastic at all it's very nice weather here actually it's less hot than what it is in bali in my opinion Oh, and one more thing, maybe a hat because you really, the sun is really intense here and I got burns on my head. Don't be me, bring a hat. And this is something I always, always say, if you're prone to motion sickness, definitely bring motion sickness tablets because you're doing lots of ferries, you're going to be on boats and if you get motion sickness easily, you'll definitely get it on this trip. So just rather be safe than sorry and take motion sickness this is another very important thing that you should have before you come to Nusa Penida, actually before you come to Bali, is travel insurance. There's so many things that can go wrong on this island. It's actually a, a little worrying. Like Rhett, look at his back here. He got absolutely obliterated in the ocean that looked pretty calm and fine. Yep, he started bleeding on his back, which is really not that bad. I twisted my ankle, thought I nearly broke it, my goodness. Kalinking Beach and Diamond Beaches were so sketchy to walk down. Anything can happen there. So definitely have travel insurance. Our favorite travel insurance is Safety Wing. You can check out that link in the description. They cover all sorts of emergencies. Medical can be quite expensive in Bali. So you, you'll want your travel insurance to cover those bills for you. All right, let's talk about where to go and what to do when you're here in Nusa Penida. The main tourist attractions here on Nusa Penida are the incredibly hard to reach beaches of Kalenking and the recently opened Diamond Beach. And of course, we cannot forget the opportunity to dive with mantas. Those are the three main things we recommend you do here on Nusa Penida. The island is relatively small. It'll only take you about three hours to drive around the whole circumference. Unfortunately though, these tourist attractions are on opposite sides of the island, so be prepared to drive for at least one and a half hours between the two. 
That's another reason why we do recommend you spend more than two days on the island just so you can potentially split up the tourist attractions a bit. So our recommendation would be to stay on the Diamond Beach side for one night. You can stay at one of these homestays and then head across to Crystal Bay side. There's a whole bunch of hotels and things to stay at there. And from there you can get to Kalinking, Broken Beach, Crystal Bay, etc. And if you're wondering where I am right now, this is Tropical Glamping. The link will be in the description. One of the top things to do is Diamond Beach. The entrance is 25,000 per person and 5,000 to park your bike. And they've just created a new path so you can go actually onto the beach now and swim. Just make sure that the tide and the waves aren't too hectic. Also do recommend bringing some closed shoes for this part as well as Kalinking Beach because the paths can be a little treacherous and you don't want to do it in flip-flops. How are you doing? This is a little scary! I hate heights. So we made it down, it is incredibly beautiful, the sand is so soft and white, a little treacherous for the old ladies just so you know, but it is possible, now you can just enjoy. We've made it to Crystal Bay and uh, we've already organized a guide for all five of us. We're going on a private boat and they say the water's flat and they saw manta rays this morning. So, oh yeah, by the way, that's what we're doing. Right, so that is our second attempt to trying to find mantas in Nusa Penida. <laughs> Unsuccessful again this time, but still a lot of fun. So I highly recommend it. I'll put some footage here from our friend Travis Springer's video. He did see mantas last time, so they are here, they do exist. They're actually swimming down below the tropical glamping bungalow every single day. You can see them from the footage here. It's absolutely beautiful. But right now we're just grabbing a quick lunch at Amok Sunset. It's a nice little cafe, kind of on the pricey side, but they do have a swimming pool and a beautiful view. It's a good spot to come for sunset. This is obviously one of the things that you have to come see here in Nusa Penida as well. This is Kalinking Beach. And these stairs are super, super steep. You can go all the way down to the beach. Apparently it takes you around an hour to go down and then you can spend the day down there, maybe an hour and then come an hour back up. But the people coming up are literally like drenched in sweat. It's so intense, like it just, these stairs are crazy. Entrance was only 5K here just to park your bike. But it's like basically free. It is so worth it because I don't know, I've 
I've never seen water this blue. It's not even the landmass that's beautiful, it's like the blue water below. And we spotted some manta rays on the opposite side as well. So it's awesome from above. We've never actually been down to the beach. Not today, Diamond Beach was enough. Yeah, Diamond Beach was enough. Apparently this is like 10 times harder. And the weather's not that great. So yeah, that's why we're not gonna go down, but you can if you want. So uh, mid morning, to early afternoon is when it's the busiest. It's actually about 4 p.m. 5 p.m. right now. What time is it? 4:30 p.m. and it's still a little busy, but not as busy as what it would be during the day. And I guess the weather is putting people off from coming here. The last time we came here, we were on just a day tour and we had 15 minutes here, and I feel like that was way too quick and rushed. Now we've just taken our time, come halfway down, taken pictures and videos, and just admired the scenery. The day to it, it was just, yeah, you didn't really get to take it in. And we were here in 2019 and it was so busy. Yeah, it was actually insane. I think I would actually die if I had to go all the way to the bottom and then come back up. I would actually die. Mm -hmm. oh, you were so excited to just play with you. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Goodness, there's so many cute little dogs in Bali and especially here, yeah, Noosa. Just want to take them home. Okay, we are at this incredibly stunning cafe slash beach bar, just five minutes away from Kusamba port. So as you get your scooter, you can drive here five minutes away and then you're at this beautiful beach club. And it's great for working. They've got so many different places that you can work out at. Work at, we've got this behind us. Rhett's working here with his laptop and just incredible views of the ocean. Like, are you joking? Let me take you to where Rhett's working now though, he's working in the freaking pool. Look at this place though. What? Chappy! Hello! Ha -ha. This is so epic! Welcome to my office today. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cool. <laughs> I think this is one of the most unique places we've ever worked in. This is incredible. It's nice and breezy today. Kind of windy, I hope you can hear us. <laughs> definitely one of our favorite places to come and chill in New Spanida. It's definitely a good spot to do some work and it's probably one of the only places that offers a more western style menu so if you're used to those like Bali cafes then this is going to be your spot. Let's talk about what to skip. We did a day trip to Nusa Penida in 2019 and we really did not enjoy our time. The trip included some snorkel time at Manta Point and then onto the island where we spent most of the time in the car driving from photo spot to photo spot. The tour was very rushed and we basically got no time to enjoy it. We really would not recommend doing the day trip but to rather spend a couple nights exploring all the island has to offer. Other things to note. There are ATMs, petrol stations, mini marts and hundreds of warungs on the island. There is definitely a lack of western Bali style cafes, but the island is not aiming to be the next digital nomad hotspot. It's a place to come and let loose and enjoy all the adventurous things it has to offer. For a more detailed video on all things Bali and Indonesia, you can check out our full guide linked in the description and up above. We hope you found this video useful and if you did, don't forget to give it a like, it really helps reach more people. We'll see you in the next one.